So hello, I'm going to read you a little piece from my novel The Unexpected Love Objects of Dunya Noor. Um, and while I'm in quarantine in Athens. So let's see, this is page 120. And let's see if I can see it. Okay. The Hakawati's eyebrows were highlighted in a dramatic way and the lapels of his shirt flew out to the sides in an endearing, be pretentious manner. He had both humour and glamour, something rarely seen in typical state Hakawatis who were always and forever in the autumn of their lives. How do you do it? One of the men asked the Hakawati. How do you manage to hypnotise us with your lies, young sir? These are not lies, I promise you boys. I only sing about the truth. All I have in my profession are the 28 letters of the Arabic alphabet. With them I must capture your hearts and souls. I think of them the same way a musician thinks of his musical notes. These are not lies, I promise you, boys. I only sing about the truth, your heart's truth. We're not boys, the audience protested altogether in unison like boys in a classroom. Dunya looked at the strange assortment of men sitting on rickety chairs all around her some holding their bellies as if in anticipation of what the Hakawati might say next, while others try to rearrange their hairdos in an attempt to look as alluring as possible, possibly as alluring as the Hakawati himself. He seemed to be reminding them of how they could or might have been. He effortlessly outshone them all, and that was not something they were used to from a Hakawati, for normally a Hakawati was a dusty and rather rusty man, not so young and full of himself, and if he happens to be young, he should not be so jumped up and pleased with himself, but must be respectful of those who are older than him, and in awe of them. This young man broke all the rules. The Hakawati watched Dunya take photographs of everyone in the cafe as if she didn't think it was an issue. Most of the men thought that she should have at least asked them if they minded, but they were too shy or polite to say anything. With her green eyes and light brown hair and unusually scruffy dress sense, Dunya appeared European, and so they saw her as a woman who operated outside their realm of rules and regulations. They were feeling very spaced out and open-minded in any case that evening, and everything seemed acceptable and possible to them. Dunya focused her lens on the Hakawati's face. He was smiling directly at her. He had long and curving eyelashes that he fluttered at her mockingly. Look at this girl, he pointed his finger at Dunya. She's taking photos of all and sundry, without asking for permission. Shouldn't we have a say in whether she's allowed to steal our images from the air like this or not? But no, we're gentlemen after all, and we'll submit to her curiosity, won't we? We're not afraid of a girl who might or might not be a thief of light, who might or might not be taking pieces of our souls, our hearts and dreams, and storing them inside that machine she's holding. We're men, and so we don't worry about subtle, ephemeral things like this, do we? The Hakawati waved his book in the air. The Hakawati waved his book in the air. Did you not know that the soul is made of light? And photography, I'll have you know, is the art of capturing light inside a machine, capturing it and making it everlasting. What fresh crop of nonsense is this? I don't believe a word of it, a man with a white moustache and stripy clothes said. I will read another tiny bit from the prologue, which is about light. And excuse all the scribbling on this copy. It's not even my handwriting, by the way. Um, so, prologue. Dunya Noor had once heard that, when love occurred, the object of her love would begin to sparkle, because true love often appeared in the unexpected form of light. Was this really true? Only God knew. Only God and possibly also her camera. All she would need to do was to take a photograph of that light, if and when it shone in the face of her beloved. That was how she'd prove that he was the one. For they could only ever be one. They could only ever be one God, one Father, one Mother, only one. They could only ever be one sun in the sky, one moon, only one. And in a country like Syria, 
there could ever, there could only ever be one truth, only one, and there was only one man who knew it, and his name was Hafez al-Assad.